The 2024 election marks a dubious milestone for a demographic we haven't yet seen represented in Congress. January 6th rioters, three people convicted for storming the Capitol in 2021, are running for Congress this year. And a fourth, an Arizona state senator, is currently under state criminal investigation for his role as a fake elector in 2020. Now, further down the ballot, there's a candidate who pled guilty to being at the Capitol on January 6th and two more who were involved with former President Trump's Stop the Steal speech earlier that morning. NBC's Ryan Riley has covered all of these cases so closely for us. Julie Serkin is live from The Hill. OK, Ryan, tell us more about these congressional hopefuls. One even ran in 2022, right, when he was incarcerated? Yeah, you know, I think that out of these uh, the three who are running the defendants, probably the most serious uh, is Derek Evans, who was actually a lawmaker before uh, before all this. He was a state lawmaker in West Virginia. Uh, there he is being uh, sworn into his role there on the screen, his previous role, uh, that he sort of resigned as a result of these charges. Um, I witnessed his sentencing hearing. He was very contrite at that time, telling Judge uh, Lambert that, uh, you know, he was very sorry. He was going to have to, he realized that the, as a consequence of his actions that day, that he was going to have to spend time away um, from his family. He actually did the hearing, sentencing hearing via Zoom. So there was a giant photo of his young family uh, behind him that the judge uh, could look at when he was ultimately sentenced him to three months in prison. But there's just such a stark contrast between what Derek Evans was saying in court that day, being very apologetic for his actions, and what he's saying now, where he's sort of doing all of this false flag nonsense about January 6, claiming that, you know, he was politically persecuted, um, even though the video that day very clearly shows that Derek Evans knew what he was doing. Uh, he recorded himself for more than an hour as they charged uh, up on the east side of the Capitol uh, that day that he ultimately entered. What he'll focus on is he'll say, hey, I gave a cop a fist bump uh, when I went inside. But what he won't focus on is him narrating these events uh, for an hour, saying, you know, we charged past this line. We charged past that line. Here we are going up the stairs. I don't think the cops can hold us back comments of that nature. So he really is someone, I think, who uh, it's real, would be really be quite a stark contrast to see, you know, him actually being represented, being a representative on Capitol Hill. And in fact, Julie, Freedom Caucus Chair Bob Good has actually endorsed one of these candidates. Tell us more. Yeah, Bob Good endorsed Derek Evans, who Ryan just so well laid out the history and the background of all of this context. And you might be wondering, what good does it do a sitting congressman, somebody who's the chair of the House Freedom Caucus, which has always been the thorn in the side of Republican leadership, what does it do for him to make a public endorsement like this? I think the first member of Congress to endorse any of these candidates uh, who were here on January 6th, well, you have to look at Bob Good and who he's running against, right? He is a primary challenger right now who is being backed by many moderate, many centrist members of the House, including the political arm of the Republican Main Street Caucus, a moderate center-right-leaning group here in the House who uh, happens to be chaired by Carol Miller. She is the woman in West Virginia, the incumbent, that Derek Evans, that January 6th rider, is actually going up against. Here's a little piece of Bob Good's statement, his endorsement of support for Evans. He said, quote, we cannot change Washington and save the country by electing the status quo. We need true, courageous conservatives conservative warriors like Derek Evans. You also might wonder that Good is trying to prop up his MAGA bona fides, if you will. This is somebody who has previously endorsed Ron DeSantis, the Florida governor, earlier in the primary before he dropped out. Then he switched his support, backing former President Trump uh, instead. So clearly this isn't happening in a vacuum. Good hopes this actually helps him in his own reelection. So we have less than a minute, but is there any chance that any of these other candidates, Ryan, look like they could get enough backing, enough support that they could make a real run of it. You know, I think QAnon Shaman's probably a real long shot, right? So I think that, you know, Derek Evans does seem to be, uh, of this group at least, the person who actually could make a, a run of it, at least for uh, the House. These lower ballot races, that's certainly something, um, you know, that's certainly on the table. We've seen other January 6th defendants run for uh, other offices around the country and sort of use this as a publicity mechanism for them, getting a lot of attention as, you know, quote unquote, warriors for Donald Trump. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.